Welcome. This is going to be our class on how to glaze your piece. You're going to start out with a piece of bisque, which has been your clay has been fired once, typically to cone 04. So it's much sturdier now, no longer fragile, so it's much better to work with. Um, let's go over some glazes first. There are, we at the club usually use Dunkins or Makos. Mine here are all Dunkins. There's some different kinds of glazes. Ones are you can be like, it's the transparents. Where if it's just one coat, you really can't see it. Two coats is a bit thicker. The third one gets a bit thicker yet. Don't have really much have much color. Just an example piece. Some are glossy. Some are matte. So there's no shine to them. So another option there. Some are classified as like a sinking glaze. Where if there's a line there, they'll go and sink. And they'll be a little bit deeper. This is espresso. Quite a nice brown. Um, but you can actually see that the upper parts are lighter. The inner parts are darker. There's some that get a little bit of a haze to them. This one's a greenish tinge because it's autumn. And some, like bluegrass, get this different bluey-green sheen to them. So they're quite interesting when it comes to the layering effect. He's also a semi-translucent gloss, so he will show it's underneath him. Which can make things really fun. So with glazing, you can do several different things. Is One, you can coat a piece all one color. Generally, most of our stuff needs at least three coats because our clay is brown. Um, for the bottom, only do maybe one, possibly two coats if you really need it. Usually one is sufficient. Um, if you're working in the club, make sure you protect your piece. You don't want the stuff in your canvas. It can affect future pieces of clay. Um, wash your hands before you handle this at any point in time, actually. If you have grease or lotion on your hands and you touch it and there's lotion there, it'll prevent the wax from, or the, sorry, the glaze from sticking, almost like a wax resist. And it will um, make a hole in your glaze. Um, so here's just a couple of examples. Here's a little bowl I made at one point. It's always nice to write your pieces down. Because you can always go back and see exactly what you did. So I now know that I layered colors here to get the dappled effect. These greens here are clover and neon yellow and bluegrass. See that little bit of a bluey shimmer. The background branches I know are walnut brown and fudge marble. And the base in here is just three coats of butter toffee. So yeah, I can recreate it if I wanted. The branches are um, Emperor Bronze, if I ever needed it. So right on the colors I want to do my piece in, I can check them off as I go. Um, other kinds of glazes, some have crystals actually built in, which are where these little tiny speckles came in. This is three coats of, um, I think it's called Fruit Punch or something like that, Rainbow Punch. This is three layers of neon orange sparkles. And this is just three coats of neon yellow. So you can do straight coats if you like. That's not a problem. Um, with glaze, you really don't get fine lines. You can see where it kind of merges. Glaze is a little bit like wax. You're never going to get a really true defined line. That's more in the realm of underglazing. Um, some of them are like our crystal glazes. Get these beautiful speckles that really enhance a simple piece. But you don't always need the crystals. They're good for some pieces. But for others, just the contrasting colors will often be enough. You can do it all one color if you want. There's no, nothing wrong with that at all. So we're going to start out here. Um, always take your sponge. I already did this in the sink, but you get it damp and you rub your sponge along it. This get, one gets rid of any loose pieces of bisque, but it also gets the dust off. And the dust can actually interfere with the glazing. As you can see, a few more pieces came out, even though I already washed it once. Just watch your sponge, because your sponge can start to shred if you aren't careful. Um, you can use a either a brush of any type that you like to apply the glaze. Or if it's a big piece, you can use a clean sponge, so not this one, and dampen it, dip it in your glaze and just dab it on. That's very good for like your transparent ones, like your butter toffees, your espressos. So there's no chance of seeing the brush strokes because there are none. But I have brushes here, so I'll you be using those. Your first coat, you want quite watery. Um, what do we have here? I don't think there's much in this one. So yeah. It's hard to see this consistency here. This is much too thick for the first coat. I'd have to thin it down using a separate container with some water in it. I'm just going to close this here while it drips back inside. What you want is kind of like a watery consistency. So that way it sinks in and really grabs onto the inside colors. Well, let's see. This one's actually already quite watery. So we've been using this a lot for this exact same color combination. So... See, it's quite watery, quite drippy. 
I'm just going to do the ground here in a grassy color. So as my colors I have listed, I'm going to do our... I didn't write down. But it's Clover, Neon Yellow, and Bluegrass. That's what gives you this really neat greeny blue color, which I quite like for grass colors. But if you want to use three coats of Clover, by all means, go for it. And you'll notice as you take glaze off the, the top that the heavier stuff will sink, so it's going to get thicker as you go. So just watch that. As you can see, some of these spots are a little tiny. Do I have any smaller brushes here? I do. Just use a smaller brush. Get into the corners that you can't with the bigger ones. As you notice, I did nail the side of this poor maple leaf here with green. So I'm going to be using three coats of neon red for since it's just the first coat. I don't have to wipe it off because neon, or neon red is strong enough to cover because it's an opaque color. So three coats will cover a little bit of green. If you've been the last coat, and I can either wipe it off with a damp sponge or scrape it off using some sort of an object like um, a pick or a sharp or even a paper clip that's been unfolded. Long well, distance on the side note. When it comes to your crystal glazes, so your fruit punch or your um, something like the night frost there, if you do do them, don't put them on the bottom inch of your piece because they have a tendency to drip. And if they get onto the kiln shelf, they basically weld themselves on. And then the lovely person who did it gets the lovely chore of taking a Dremel to it and fixing the shelf or replacing the shelf, which is not cheap at all. Here's our green... Let's this off first. No sense wasting the glaze. I can get me in there a stroke someday. Okay, I'm going to go wash the brush. I'm going to come right back. Okay, when I'm glazing, we're just going to make sure we don't touch this because it's wet and it'll just transfer right off onto other things. There we go. So just be careful how you hold it for now. Uh, I'm actually going to paint these while waiting so I can hold on to the trunk itself. Um... So let's go ahead with this. I have a rock here. I was going to use hearthstone. This one is just watery enough so I don't have to thin them down any. So let's quickly do this. Is that the only rock here? Look at that, it's the only rock there. Okay, it makes things a little easier. Just make sure your lids go on tight so your glazes don't dry out. You can rehydrate them, but they never seem to behave quite as well after they're rehydrated. So you put them to the side, I can wash them later. And let's just pick a different brush here. Okay, let's see, what do we got next? I have two maple leaves and a bigger one. Okay, so the maple leaf, I had a neon red. Ah, there it is. As you can see, these things drop lots of crumbs. Don't do it over your piece, or you could have a really interesting rainbow effect. And this one's also quite um, watery, so I don't have to worry about that one. Most of these are base coat colors I use, so they're pre watered. But if you need to water them, choose a little bowl, a little container, anything you like, a little bit of water. You don't need much to get them thinned out a little bit. A little goes a long ways. Let that sink in. Oh, 
I'm putting this on a little bit thick. Um, you can go thinner, it's personal preference. So I put these on when I was building them. Another option is to just keep them separate, just mold them to the shape you need and then keep them off. Then when you glaze them, glaze them completely and stick them on with a little dollop of glaze. And when they fire, the glazes will actually meld together and um, suction it on. Okay, and for this leaf here, I was going to try a little bit of rain tree green. So let's give this a shot. It's a little bright, a little out of place. We'll roll with it. There's not much left in here. As you can see, this is way too thick for our first coat. I don't need much. Let's put that there. One drop should be enough. Just mix in water. You can rehydrate them. So yeah, much more watery consistency. There we go. Because sometimes if it's not watered down, it won't quite grab onto the cliff. It may peel off or bubble off or pop back. This just makes sure it has a very good anchor. side there's none left or i could have dumped it in so it was clean and uncontaminated but there's none left so let's do it up and put it to the side until our next coat so now that we did that our base is actually done so we can actually touch it it's still too wet to give another coat to to tell you put the back of your hand to it if it's cold it's damp and if you put the second coat on too early it'll actually strip your first coat off um, and that can create some really unusual effects i don't think i got any of them here do i no i don't yeah, if you put them on too early, you'll strip it off and you'll actually see the clay beneath it. You won't notice it but until you fire it, but it will happen. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of that. Okay, magically, the full one appears. This one is quite watery. I used him for a base coat last time. Let's push these air brushes out of the way, including that dirty one. So, yeah. It's very watery. Well, it's actually watery when you can tell by the brush. But yeah. It's quite watery. And actually, a little more water won't go amiss here. If you're going to fan brush dirty, the best way to prop up is actually against the lid. There we go. Put the eyedropper. You could use the brush or just dump the water in. I just got the eyedropper here, so I'm going to use it. You can either stir it in if it's a fuller, put the cap on, give it a good shake. If it's a really dried out piece that's being very stubborn, let it sit for a while. If it's completely dried out, let it sit for a day or two. Then you put a couple of marbles inside and it actually helps self-agitate it. There we go. Can't really see it now, but it's very watery. Okay. So now let's pick this up, making sure we don't nail any of our pieces that might still be wet. As you can see, it's absorbing it quite fast. So this part really did want a more watery glaze. If you see that and it starts pulling up too much glaze too quickly, just go add some more water. It could also be because my piece here had time to dry out from the time it got sponged. You don't need to sponge it for layer coats, just the first one. Just to make sure you get the, the grit tins dust off. I 
I just kind of slathered it really heavily in there to make sure I missed no spots. And if you check the underglaze video, you'll see I also played with crystals in there as well. And you can actually do it with your glaze in here. Just tack it on to the glaze as you're doing it. Just a bit of a different effect. As you can see, uh, now I have to watch because I kind of put it down. I got something like that there. You can either use a piece of um, paper towel, damp paper towel. Depends how dry your stuff is. In this case, it's still damp enough that paper towel works. It rubs right off. So there we go. That one's not really going to show much once I get the next layers on it. But where the file quite I'd be a little bit more worried. If you wanted and it was a deep part, you could use um, just a metal sharp. Just to scratch back the glaze lightly and just blow it off. So something like that. If you're doing like deep engraving, you can use this. I've seen some people actually put three or four layers on something, then use a sharp um, um, a carver to peel out patterns in it to show the layers beneath of different colors. And sometimes those are quite interesting effects. Also, you can also just dab different brush colors onto it and just layer it up that way. It's completely um, your own choice here. Feel free to play experiment. Just watch what your glazes are because your semi-translucents and your opaques will layer differently. Um, and your opaques, you can't see through them. Raiden Tree, for example. This one's very strong. You even put yellow beneath it, you're not, not going to find it. Something like Bluegrass, you can see through him quite easily. As you can see here, you can see the greens and the yellows through the Bluegrass I put on here. But on this one, you wouldn't see anything if there were anything there. And sometimes all you want is this neat little light sheen. Maybe you don't. But you can just play around with that. I'm going to finish this up here. Um, but yeah, feel free to play. I'm going to go put all three coats on and I'll come back with the finished piece. So this is some of what you can do with the glazing. So here's a sample of probably about half the colors that I have. There's quite a few varieties. Some are called sprinkles, like this neon yellow sprinkle. They come with the dots in already. Um, some are crystal glazes, like Emerald Falls. They have the crystals inside of them. Some will actually have like a glitter. This is your hematite. And others are nice straight colors, like Harvest and Rain Tree Green. These are all opaque colors. Other ones like Bluegrass, Holiday Green, Espresso. These are all semi-transparent. As you can see, this one just kind of fades into... This is one coat, two coat, three coat. So this is just kind of a nice gradient. Um, given lines, many of our semi-transparents will sink and will actually highlight your design, which can come in very handy in certain combinations. So here's just a few samples. This is a wheeled woman mother made. This is an interesting one. This is actually a combination of clover, then yellow, and then blue grass. And that's what you get. So you can see some of the clover showing out and the neon yellow just actually um, just brightens the greens underneath it. This is a layer of, I'd have to look it up, this is delphinium and kelp. And I think it should, should have the cup a little bit thinner and it would have looked a little bit there and just highlighted the lines. I'll know for next time. These are just some straight ones, um, pumpkin spice, this is driftwood, this is one of my browns, I forget its name at the moment, it's written down. A little candle holder. 
to San Diego and a whole bunch of Emerald Falls crystals. Using just the crystals creates a nice effect. As you can see, the crystals like to run, so you have to watch if you put more than just a couple. This little guy is just pure three coats of espresso. Nice color. The nest itself is a variety of browns. I'd have to look them up to see exactly what it is. You can do patterns. Just watch because you won't really get fine lines um, easily with our glaze. They tend to run kind of like wax crayons in an oven. But you can still get some neat effects and some texturing. So a little pencil holder. Here's our stump we did in the tutorials. A couple more tutorial pieces. Um, I'd list the colors. I can't remember them off the top of my head. It's a nice little coil guy. You can do flat pieces. But like I mentioned, if you're going to do lines, you have to watch them. These are actually indentations, which is the only reason these glazes actually stayed where they were put is because this black likes to sink. Um, just watch the whites in our kiln because if you put more than like two coats on, they like to bubble. So you have to really, really watch. Um, there's a little bit of bubbling. Where was it? It is in here somewhere, and you can just barely see the starting hints of it. So I'm glad I only put the two thin coats on. You can do neat things like doing all sorts of decorations. This is an, this is one of the upside down bowl techniques. And I just took it to the wheel afterwards and trimmed off all the excess slip we put on it. See some of the pinks? I put a little bit too much of the clear on the back. But now we get to your designs and stuff. That one takes a lot of work, um, so you have to have quite a good section of time available when you start because you have to finish it pretty quick. And these are all decoration pieces. You can see the crystals here are what made these pieces look so nice. Um, like there's just your neon blue in the back. It wouldn't have looked just so nice with just the neon blue. So it was the textures on top that made this one. Go over here. These are more crystals. Um, this is about three or four layers, including one called Coral Puff which is a different one we can use in our kilns, but the club doesn't stock it just yet. This is an interesting one. It was just neon orange, sorry, neon yellow, then neon orange sprinkles, then a light coat of neon red. And it gave this really bright look, and because of all the lines and designs, it gave it its pattern. This one is actually very similar to our leaf over here, in which it is clover, neon yellow, bluegrass, but then a coat of emerald falls at the crystals, and that gives you that. So you can do some really neat things. You can either go straight or layered. It's completely up to you. Many people go straight. They do things like these just straight. That's perfectly fine. There's all sorts of ways of doing it. Um, this little cross here is a neat piece. Let's take him up here if I don't want to drop him. One second. So I'll turn him sideways. So yeah, his pieces were actually put on afterwards. So I kept all these little pieces, tackies, separate when they were fired to bisque and then to glaze. So I was actually able to hold them in my hands while I glazed them. And then when everything was glazed, I took a little dollop of white, put it on the back of this, and then stuck it down like glue. And when it fired, because this turns basically a glass, it all stuck on and nothing falls off. If you're going to do something big, this is for a wall hanging, rough up your back, because otherwise this smooth section here, your stuff won't stick to it. This is JB Weld. It's the strongest I've found so far. It's just a regular wall hanging. These are relief cuts to help prevent crackings because it gets so thick when it shrinks, you have a tendency of it to crack. Once again, my lines here are actually an indentation. You can feel it. And that's what kept the lines separate. You can see it bled in a few spots, but it's so minor. This is two coats, or one coat of neon orange and two of neon red. This is, I think it was delphinium and a little bit of kelp. I'd have to look it up again. This is the clover neon yellow bluegrass. These are a couple of different um, browns I have I'd laying around. So yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do with glaze. Um, your colors, your limit, your textures, the limit, your layering's the limit. If you're going to layer, I suggest writing it down just so that you can keep track of what you've done and what you would not like to do again and other stuff like that as well. If you're going to buy lots of glazes, get really heavy into it, I recommend making the tokens, especially if they're textured so you can kind of see what it does in the sinking areas. Um, these are the ones I bought my first year, so... They could definitely use some texturing, but they are what they are, and I don't have to bend over to read the labels. 
Um, but do watch if they are food safe because that's going to make a big difference. Like Emerald Falls is one of our crystal glazes. Um, but if you turn it over and you look at the details, where is it? But yeah, this one is not food safe because it's one of our crystal ones. Um, so yeah, definitely watch for food safe. And there you go.